So looks like we're okay on citizen comment. By the way, I'm all good. I'm glad to see all of you healthy, given what trying times we've been having. And let's take a moment to then next look at the minutes for today. I mean, for um, August, from August, and check those out. Yes. And see if there are any. Do you want to take a sec to read them over, or has everybody read over? <clears throat> Hi, Terry. Welcome. Hi, Terry. We can't... I have a point of information about the minutes. Yes, one second. I'm not sure if we can hear Terry. Are you muted or unmuted? He's self muted. Okay. Self muted. I just I want him to know that we can't hear. I got it. Thank you. Oh. All right. Good. Welcome. Okay, Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, I have a point of information on the uh, minutes. And I don't know if you have extra notes, Matt, or if somebody else can help me remember, but when we were talking about how it would be best to word that we um, let go of the hot funds for uh, Art Fest 2021, there was, I remember there was some particulars about how it was worded. And I don't remember if that minutes actually has the right wording and i'm not sure does it, if anyone if no one else remembers well, i'm fine if we go with it but i just i just seem to remember that it was it was a point that we had to sort out that we say it right how we just how we are letting go of those funds the, this is the the highlighted line right here that's the what's in my notes and usually i try to take really good notes when whenever we've okay. made a motion and usually well, nobody else has a, has a uh, an easiness about it. I'm good. I just, when I read it, I remembered that we, we were going around about what the words should be for that. So I just want to make sure we got right. it right. Yeah. And I think that's good. I think we, we did, we used that specific wording because we were only relinquishing, like we didn't want to relinquish all, we were just like specific to the hot funds requested for ArtFest. So since we're not, we weren't pursuing it, we were letting that go. Uh, so, but we didn't want our other items taken off the, the what was it called? The parking lot. So. The parking lot, yeah. right. So it sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, that's what I that's what I recollect as well that we were the word relinquished got a lot of special attention. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the I other I don't remember what it was. I just remember it was an issue. I wanted to make sure we got it right. Yes. Well, if it comes back, let us know. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. What else about the notes? Or the minutes, sorry. Sounds like we're in good shape. So then do we need to have a motion? Or I always forget this. Or do Yes, we need a motion to accept the minutes. Yes, thank you. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as they are? My motion. Thank you, Joe. Anybody second? I second. Thank you, Terry. Okay, so all in favor, um, maybe raise hands. Okay. Rob, uh, and, Rob's not on video, though. Yeah, he's not. I think he's going to be in and out, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. um, well, that's it. That I saw all hands raised, so the motion passes. Okay, good. And I guess would we say that his was an abstain? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I will say I like seeing the minutes there, but it's it's hard to look at that and also the documents that you've got up. Now. Yes, sir. <laughs> I need like a well, I can just take notes on on my notepad. I just run the risk of notepad. 
making you work so hard. It's fine. Okay. Um, we're next going to go to the city council report and hear what Karen has to tell us about. It's been a busy and interesting time recently. <laughs> it's always busy and it's always interesting to say the yes. least. Um, but we're wrapping up the year. Um, we, we are into a new fiscal year, um, but the um, council uh, put out a work list for the remainder of 2020 for each of the committees. And the um, direction from Council for Arts Commission was to close out the fiscal year 20 projects and any remaining reports that were due. And I know um, Terry had a question. I think you were all on that email. Council likes to get reports quarterly. And um, in the past, we've kind of tried to do that. But to be honest, it was um, mainly I'd submit a report when Clay nudged me and said it was probably a good time to submit a report, which was usually before Art Fest, after Art Fest was closed out, and then at the end of the year. So um, we really did, there was really not a lot of activity because of COVID, but there was a canceled. Art Fest that had some um, hot fund uh, cost associated with it that uh, Matt's put a report together for y'all to deal with later. Um, so that should suffice, I think, for this year. And um, the other thing I did and send out in that email, I don't know if everybody, was everybody on that email, Terry? I can't recall. Okay, <laughs> me neither. Um, uh, Terry had sent out an email about the, um, ampersand meeting at council the specially called meeting oh, last yes, night so. yes everyone was on it okay cool so um there was um we're mm -hmm. still in the onboarding phase of this project because the contract we couldn't get started on it until the contract was signed so the first part of that was our orientation meeting which happened i think it was at the end of september and last night's meeting was our second meeting with Amperson. It was a work session. And it was to review the compiled survey that Amperson had sent to the council members with a list of questions and some historical documents from retail coats and coach and stuff. And um, that compiled report was attached to that email in case you didn't get a chance to go to the meeting. Um, I put it on that email. The next, it was really exciting about that was there was a lot of talk about how to enhance the city and art was a pretty common theme throughout art within the city. So that was kind of exciting and I, I think uh, something the Arts Commission should be involved uh, moving forward. The next phase of this is still in the beginning phase one and that's going to be a SWOT analysis that from what I understand from Ampersand, they'll be sending uh, council the format, but we're gonna be doing that live in a meeting that'll be an open workshop. That'll be the next step. And that's really all I have, the election coming up. We'll have a new mayor and a new council seated. So um, get your applications in, your volunteer applications, Matt's gonna go over his up he did some updates to the form which are great thank you matt and um last year it was a little slow in getting the committee appointments done before council and it ended up being in january my hope is that this year those appointments can happen at the meeting the first meeting in december i would think after the swearing in of the new members um, so we'll have to see how the how the council agenda goes once the new council's seated. Unless Matt, you have some insight as to when that might be on the new agenda. I think you're muted. Sorry. I don't know if it'll be the first meeting in December, but it's definitely December is the goal. Okay. That's, that's after the retreat. So the retreat will most likely be the, honestly, the, the, the week before Thanksgiving. So the first meeting of the new council will be, the swearing in will be the 17th. And I think the, the, the target retreat date is like the 19th, 20th, 21st. So mm -hmm. we're gonna try to pick up speed. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, that all happened in November, so we won't have a regular council meeting till December, correct? December 1st. December 1st, okay. Mm -hmm. So hopefully so we'll be able to get to it right. right off the bat. Right. And that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions? Any, any comments? Actually, I have a question on it. I'm sorry, I've been sure. splitting myself between a couple things here. No um, problem. What is it, Rob? The um, so I, I I listened in uh a bit to the meeting on Tuesday, and it, it seems like they take it, it it seems like they take resident kind of input, and do we know like the weight? that is put on that because I mean there was like some really good ideas that were being thrown around in that meeting but like uh just one of those things where it's just like they went through that whole thing and there's going to be potentially three new people you know involved in government and so it's just like they said it and then it's just like can you go back and revisit it or if like citizen or resident uh input is weighed just the same then i think i'm i'm fine with it because like everyone can have their own own voice but oh yeah so part of their contract is so like i said we're just in the very beginning on on board on boarding so they're trying to get a grip on their a very specific direction and goal for th their work and um, part of their contract involves um focus groups citizen engagement um activities and those will all be in the upcoming phases once they compile the basic information and have something to share with everybody for feedback so there's several um parts of the focus groups and stakeholder meetings and resident feedback throughout the process and in, in phases looks like it's in phases um Three, it looks like three and phase two will, will probably be the some town hall meetings and they're supposed to come up with some creative ways to create to engage the residents in the process. So to be determined, but it'll be in the next phase. All right, excellent. Thank you. And also, Rob, I just want to add that because the city council is the steering committee of the marketing firm, you know, pretty much practically I, every decision will be you know posted on an agenda probably there might be we're hoping to go to a more workshop format next year but eventually like every action you know it'll be on a council agenda so there there will always be a chance for resident input as we move along with this process because it'll just be very public with the city council being the steering committee so yeah well, thanks the whole process is about five and a half months if you look at their timeline and they did mention last night that they wouldn't be at a point of launching any kind of media campaign until spring so i have a question or a favor to ask um since for some reason i was not at that meeting last night um could you could someone give me the synthesis of what was said about art and ampersand and the city and how we're positioning ourselves etc well if you look at that report that um, survey compilation there's a whole lot of information in there from um, the ideas that were shared and then i guess there's a video recording up already i think Oh, okay. it was a lot of things like from sunset and sunrise benches to um, what we had talked about in the Arts Commission uh, years ago, and we have the donkey maquettes, um, you know, those kinds of art in public places, murals, uh, all kinds of ideas were just uh, thrown out. But um, they'll put all that together in some kind of a format that people can add to give feedback on okay 
did anybody else who was attending gain any other insights that would be informative from that meeting? I, I just think echoing, I think Karen said this at the beginning, like it just seemed very, like everyone, especially Ampersand was on board with the idea of public art. Like they were very much, um, in, like if we really want to make sense of a destination and uh, Karen, I know you used the word sticky, like if we want, you know, people to know, know where we are, know who we are, that public art is a great, is a great way to, to do that. And I think Ampersand is on board. With mm -hmm. that, and would re and would recommend, you know, uh, the installation of public art, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There was some talk about like how the neighborhoods in Austin, each neighborhood had some kind of a funky um, identity, and um, and what is our funky identity? What 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 would make people want to come here and hang out? That's the sticky part. Yeah. So, you know, where do you, people come in? They want to do selfies, you know, in front of the I love you thing on Joe's, you know, the mural and things like that. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, Terry, did I see your hand up for a minute? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to piggyback on what Karen was talking about. And they looked at like the, I think there's a, uh, a, na a hip name for. South Lamar now, that I can't recall what it is and how that's being developed. And then there's a SoCo or so SoCon over the South Congress. And they talked to, what I really liked about what I heard was they weren't trying to, to, to uh, they were trying to come up with concepts that might actually work and they've already worked in Austin in certain areas of Austin in terms of attracting a, a crowd who's going somewhere because it's cool to go there. There's some good stores, and good restaurants. There's a place to get a drink and there's activity around like the trail system in particular. Uh, rather than uh, really focusing on the shopping district itself, where honestly Sunset Valley it has very little control because the property managers decide who who leases the property in that. So it, what Sunset Valley has is persuasion and incentive, but not control. But the, these they guys were familiar with some of these other areas and what they've done, and kind of like signature places to get your picture taken, or uh, signature art, signature murals, etc. Was a part of the tool bag that was used to attract people who would come and stay. Mm -hmm. Now, for them to stay, they have to have more than shopping. Uh, so the, the restaurant mix is real important. And they have yeah. to have access to uh, the trails and the bike trails, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's a that's gotcha. all. That was interesting. Thank you for edifying me and I'm sure others as well. Okay. Um, so let's see, we just had our council liaison report and we're gonna take a sec to look at, or uh, yeah, a minute to look at the volunteer application forms. I wanted to make sure to um, let you all know that I had heard from, and I knew this, but it wasn't finalized yet, that uh, Terry and why do I always blank on his name? Well, the the Chafin, the Chafins have moved out to their place in Schulenburg, so they won't be able to join us in the future because they would only be doing so remotely. Um, so we are I, we are saying goodbye to them from this meeting. Uh, so they have been it's been great to have them, albeit short. Troy. Thank you, Sasha. Finally, it kicked in. Um, so, Matt, do you want to talk about the volunteer appreciate or the volunteer form application yeah. form? Sorry, sure. did I say appreciation? Yeah, I, I keep I'm saying that. I'm thinking about appreciating all of you. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, let me just do it from the home page. 
so if you're on the home page, it looks a little different. We did a little cleanup today, but um, if you go down here, uh, well, there's two ways to get to it. This is probably the best way. Resident opportunity, volunteer opportunities, and then all the instructions are here. But if you click this up here, this takes you to the form. Uh, like Karen said, there's it's pretty much the same form, except we, we made some changes. Uh, the, really the big change is if you're applying for separate committees, like if you want to be on two, because you can be on two standing committees and commissions as long as you're not on the, 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 the zoning commission and board of adjustment is different. But I believe like Terry, you're on two commissions, right? You're on the, or two committees. You're on this one and the um, budget and finance, right? As an alternate. That's correct. So you, you would, do, if you want to keep that uh, the same, Terry, what you would do is fill one out for the Arts Commission. You know, you select, drop down, select Arts Commission, regular member, and then the rest of the information. And then you would do a separate form for uh, budget and finance. And there's a way that you can say, oh, well, I would like to be an alternate as opposed to a regular member. And then there's this second, uh, ch there's this checkbox here. The reason we put this here is if you do apply for more than one committee, but you really don't want to serve on more than one committee, uh, then don't check that box. Sorry if it sounds a little confusing. It just makes ha having one application for each committee just makes it easier for both staff going through them and the council members when they're looking at them. Um, what did we discuss here? Oh, that, that the community service and experience and expertise pertain to the committee or commission for which you're applying for. I hope that made sense. <laughs> and it's fillable online. Thank you, Matt. Yes, yes. Every you can do it all online and then you just, you know, email it. There's my email right there. You just email it to me. So <clears throat> Ruth. I just have a quick question. There's a limit as to how many committees you can be on as a regular, only two. Is Correct. there a limit to how many committees you can be an alternate? That is that's an interesting question. And I it, that is not in the code. So <laughs> there's kind of maybe a Karen, I just <laughs> that might be a gap <laughs> in my code. You know, there's always something. So so yeah, we, we have it. something to address. Right, right. So yeah, so it would be kind of, it would be that's probably something to address, yeah, because let's say, oh yeah, I'm on one committee, but I'm an alternate on four committees. That doesn't, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. But you're right, a, not clear. We have, it's not in the code. Right, it's not in the code. And, and maybe it was for, you know, well, maybe, you know, in case some committees were having problems, you know, filling, you know, members, we needed some extra alternates. I, I don't, I don't know why it was never addressed, but yeah. I'm just imagining a person who's a busy body and they want to have <laughs> more voice. Right. And be on a whole bunch of committees. Right. They're, they won't be voting, but they're attentive and vocal and whatever. I'm just being a deliberative person. <laughs> Job on the new application, because Joe and I were ones last year that were a bit confused as to what first, second, and third choice meant. Right. How we right. So this is much more plain and clear. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Karen. You bet. And we'll put that question of alternate members uh, on those board retreat, board retreat. Board retreat. <laughs> retreat hopefully, because the committees will be on these. Okay. So, um, in the most common meaning of terms, we will need to each turn in the form if you choose to give it next year. And Karen, do, we're doing. Let's see. Is there something the matter with my audio? My audio. We're getting. Hmm. Now I, now I, okay, I don't know why that is. Maybe just, if, if you're not speaking, just hit mute. So that, oh, <laughs> let's go hunting. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's go hunting. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so it seems like, um, 
Um, I don't know. I don't know. Should I try just signing off and signing off? Because I have difficulty. Wondering if you can understand me. It's okay right now for me. Okay, great. Thank you. It was just double reverberating in my ear. So in other words, we'll all have to turn this in. And if you want to wait until after the election, I understand that's fine. Uh, but we can't wait too long because we'll have to get it into the hands of uh, the new council as soon as possible. And the same is true if you have suggestions of people that you would like to recommend to join the committee. Um, has anybody had a chance? Well, I already know from Terry and Miles that you have thought about that and you don't have people to suggest right now. Um, Karen, did you, I mean, Ruth, did you and Joe have anybody to suggest for the committee yet? I think that will be can't hear me or no. Hello, hello. Can anybody hear me? Sound fine to me. Okay, good. That's at least one. What about you, Karen? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. It might be that I see Joe, but Joe, you might be muted. Okay. I think that's possible. And Ruth is in the kitchen or something. So Yes. Yes. I hope she's making me some dinner. Terry. <laughs> I yeah. think you have to unmute Joe, that's all. I'm, you, I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm, I'm a little out of it, so yeah, I I, I hear you. <laughs> okay. Good, good. You sound the way I feel. And Terry, you're good on hearing. You can hear okay. You can refresh my what we're a group. Are you ask? What are you asking, Sasha? It's yeah, I was trying to remember what I was asking. I was asking, I think, for us to make sure to fill out the form if we want, and also to, uh, if there were any new people to suggest. And I knew that some of you didn't have new people to suggest right now, but might later. And I think that yeah. was it. Yes, and then that's that's uh, that's where I am as well as. Probably suggest uh, some sometime toward the first, the end of the first week in November. Yeah, the deadline for the applications is the thirteenth of November, so it's after the election and gives people a little time to think about what they want to serve, who they, where they want to serve. Okay, thanks. Okay, will there be some kind of a reminder sent out about that, Karen or Matt? Yeah, definitely. Um, the newsletter and um, the mayor's, uh, Mayor Cardona's last uh, state of the city address, it's like a letter, that went out today, actually. So hopefully all of you are signed up for the general city correspondence and email newsletter and eye contact. And if you're not, just let me know. I can check for you or I can tell you how to do that. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely send a reminder, probably two more reminders, like the, the first week of November and then the, right before the deadline, just to remind folks so about okay. the uh, volunteer applications. Okay, that sounds good. Um, do we have uh, anybody who's made an official decision to withdraw at this time? No, that's good. Okay. So um, I think we're finished with the volunteer application forms, unless there are any other questions about it. We're good, okay. Um, so we wanted, I wanted to change our order a little bit um, and move item number seven up after item number five. That is to say, talk now about the closing activity report for city council. And I don't know if Terry's email was seen by everybody where you were asking about is this a new thing to do reporting and I, I saw that Karen had responded to that and I would say the same thing we've always reported in the past but we haven't always been officially requested to report but Karen um, and the committee have always been quite diligent about reporting anyway 
just in case somebody later on said, oh, how come you didn't report? So I think basically this is sort of what we used to do at the end of every year anyway. But Matt, I think it would be helpful if you could walk us through the, um, the closing activity report that you drafted up for us and also look at the um, at the, some of the data that you're sending along with it, the expense report. Sure. So Thanks. yeah, it's a pretty simple report. Um, it just kind of outlines what we as the commission have been dealing with since COVID, which was Art Fest this year had to be canceled. We uh, decided because of the pandemic and budget restraints to not pursue Art Fest next year. So I mentioned, you know, we're going to be looking at and exploring, you know, over the next, I think that's kind of going into the new new fiscal year. This is what we're going to be exploring, like how to promote art, um, you know, in pandemic <laughs> during the pandemic and with our limit, very limited budget. So we did have some expenses related to Art Fest 2020, uh, just uh, expenses we had, already, and we, we all discussed this as a commission earlier in the year, um, just expenses that we had already paid for, um, advertising and um, labor, and then expenses that were also just contractually um, owed. Um, and so that's really what that expense report is. This was a report done by Ray Jean and Sylvia back in May. Um, no additional hot funds were spent. So this is all of the hot funds spent um, that were spent uh, in, in the last fiscal year, fiscal year 1920. So um, you can just see here that this is just outlines. Not all of this is art, uh, excuse me, um, arts commission. So. That's Art Fest. Um, uh, there's a, it's split between advertising expenses and then event expenses, and then there's additional information. This is just from the general ledger account here. Um, so who was paid, or what vendors were paid, and yeah, we we all discussed that as commission, I believe, earlier in the in the summer. So, but if anyone has any questions, I'll I'll be happy to hopefully answer them so yeah so this page that is page number three is the one that looks specifically at the um who was paid correct yeah thanks for pulling all that together matt nice job yeah that's good in fact you know he could be the chair next year except he can't <laughs> be the chair <laughs> You could, but you can't, sadly enough. Anyway, um, any questions or thoughts about that? Because basically what we're looking at is what is it that we're going to be submitting as our final uh, report to council of our year, well, of our year activities. Probably the least complicated one we've ever had. Matt, did we, was there general fund expense in that fiscal year? Yes, no, but just related to the storage. There was, no, and okay. I didn't know that needed to be in the report, but yeah, I, I confirmed that there wasn't any kind of cultural activity or anything like that in the fiscal, there was one in 2019, but it was not in the fiscal year. Uh, I believe it was in September or August. But it, I checked. It definitely was not in October or November or December. So, so do we want do we want to make a note here after the report for um, the art fest for the hot funds, just that no activities were uh, no funds for from general fund were spent on events due to COVID. Due to COVID. Okay. I I will add that. Um, I'll add that to the report. No. Basically, that we had no general fund expenses for events. For events, uh huh. And I can show that you know what was budgeted, and we spent you know we spent zero. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want council to forget that we do get general funds too. Yes. Typically. And we do yeah. have, um, I believe it's five thousand this year. Yep. So we do have a little bit of money. I mean, obviously, I don't think we're going to be planning any kind of, you know, 
event as you know we used to, but um, we do have a little bit of funds that we can hopefully find, maybe find some use for this year to promote the arts and who knows, engage with residents and that's that's for you guys to, to yeah. decide and, yeah. and talk about. And we will. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have any amendments that they would like to make to that report or comments about how it's articulated or anything else? And are you comfortable going with it in its essential form um, as our end of year report, basically? No? Okay. There's one other yeah, thing. I'm zoom zooming in just a teeny bit. <laughs> Sorry. Zooming in? Yeah, just can you zoom it in a little bit? Got it. How about that? Yeah, that perfect. Right? Okay. Now I can read it. <laughs> I love how cute Ruth's face is right up there, right in there checking it out. So really, that's the only thing that council had asked us to do while Ruth is reading was come up with this end of the year report. <clears throat> and no other activities, thoughts, brilliant concepts, or other wonderful things for now. Mr. John. John. So, so we're, we're saying that we have 5,000 general. Mm -hmm. But, but yes. our third paragraph says, due to our festival council, and all other public events being canceled as well. The Arts Commission had very few expenses this fiscal year. So are we, is that saying we probably won't spend that 5,000? That, that's let, so 5,000 is in the new fiscal year and this is report for the year ended September 30th. Oh, oh, okay. And yeah, I think we will try to use all of our big $5,000. <laughs> That would be my thought if we can find the right way to do it. And chances are, you know, with the holidays and the change in council and everything and getting the new members assigned and everything, then uh, nothing's really going to happen until 2021. You know, January will be you know, the rest of that year, January till September 30 to utilize that 5,000. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All questions are Thank you. I'm sorry, Ruth. I was just I was just complimenting Matt. Good work. There we go. And you too, Sasha. I'm sure you had a lot to it and Karen. I would say I can't take any responsibility for this one. <laughs> it was Matt. Matt did it. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. Matt, you get a, a a clap from everyone for what it's worth. That's good. Okay. So everybody comfortable with going with this format and this report? Good. So we need to have a Yes, we do. So I motion to accept it. Okay. And you motion. Can we say also with the, the edit that Karen Karen suggested an edit. So Oh, we, I'm sorry. I was doing dishes. No worries. What if Karen said it, it's a good idea. <laughs> so read it could you read it to us matt with karen's edition well it would just be to accept oh, okay. it would just be to accept the report with um the edit to add the uh that there were no general fund expenses for events so that'll be uh, it'll probably be below below this because this is talking about hot fund expenses so there will be an addition right. that there were no general fund expenses for events in fiscal year 1920. so that's okay, the okay so i amend my motion to yeah. accept the accept and submit the report to council with karen's edit of, an, of mention of general funds not being used in our expenditures Outstanding. And do we have a second for that motion? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, John. So let's do the hand up, except I don't know if Rob is there, because Rob's been in and out. 
Um, let me see if I can just... What? Sorry. Oh, hi, Rob. Good. We're about to take a vote on the motion. Give a so, thumbs up. Okay, so stay with us for a sec. So, um, yes, if you're in favor of going ahead, I mean, uh, yes for the motion. I'll, I'll raise hands. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and one abstaining. Miles, Stay. are you? Okay. Stay. All right. So we've got five and one. Got it. Six and one, sorry. Yeah. Six and one. Okay. That was the most arduous thing we had to do, I think. What do you all think? You think silence is golden? Okay. <laughs> I'm willing to go with that. <laughs> all right. So then last thing what we or some of the last things we need to do are um, we needed to look at any small groups reports. And um, yes, yes, Ruth, that's right. So that was something that you were going to be doing, Rowan. I was asking, I was hinting to Matt that could he make the print just a little larger? Oh, I see. There we go. Perfect, perfect. That's more than enough. <laughs> So um, let's see, Rob, it was something you were going to do to get the small groups together. And so I was checking to see um, any work that you all might have done in that regard. A WAPO. You've got a t shirt on, it says WAPO. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Sadly, no. Okay. Is yeah, that something? I, I I would be happy if uh if like I'm I'm still willing to like help out on it, but like I'm doing a pretty bad job of just like getting everyone on the phone to talk about it. <laughs> okay, so who is going to be on that? Was Joe and you and um and John? And John. So um, there, and just like I work from home. I don't have that many meetings, so I, I don't know what this like mental block I have about it is. Well, maybe it's just that you've got a lot of other things on your plate, and uh, I had a mental block from last time too. I committed that I was definitely, on Terry's suggestion, going to write an email to the chair of the CED committee about responding to us. And I didn't even think about it once until I watched the whole tape of the last meeting and thought, oh, now we're about four weeks too late, if not more. So it happens to people. But I guess I want to go to Joe and John and see and Miles in case and see if you all are interested in working together in that regard. Or if we just want to stay with um Joe and John, who had started that effort with you, or were going to. Fox? Well, you know, uh, we didn't get a chance to meet, but I have given it a little bit of thought. And I uh, would like to uh, propose that uh, something, and this would be totally free, so there'd be no, no, no money spent. And it's actually a presentation that I have already done to Texas State University uh, on production design for movies. And uh, I've taken uh, a bunch of projects that I've worked on and, and other things and just uh, kind of explained how um, production design comes about. Uh, uh, the, the, Using the script and then uh, uh, perhaps drawings for for sets to be built versus practical sets, which are locations that are found that can be used without building. And uh, I have examples of each, and uh, the, the the students there uh, got great feedback, and they seem to like it. And I think uh, I did a project. Kind of like this 
a presentation years ago on Lonesome Dove when we had standing room only. This would be more of a general type of a, a thing on on what uh, comprises a an art department and uh, how uh, th those different uh, uh, departments work together with uh, each other to uh, complete the look of a film. And uh, this this one was an hour and a half. I could cut it down a bit, and it could just be a a Zoom meeting or a go. I guess we use a go to office uh, and just see if uh, you know residents want to uh, look behind the scenes. Look in, yeah. Does that sound of interest to anybody, or think that might be something worth doing? Yeah, I think that sounds like something very interesting as a way of promoting um, art in it's, it's non point. It's already, it's already done. I can actually even show it to the committee ahead of time if you'd like, or just give you a, a, a list of what these slides are or something like that. If, you know, I think I think people would find it interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Ruth. Ruth. Um, this, this is like a virtual presentation, right, John? Yes. Like a, like a Zoom meeting or something? Is that what you uh -huh. said? Uh, yeah, okay. it'd be a PowerPoint. Yeah. It kind of goes with something that Joe was talking to me about today. We were talking about, you know, I think it was Terry that brought up a while back about a database of artists or something that was a registry of all the artists in Sunset Valley and what they do and what they make and I was thinking also uh, that would be a great go-to because some of these artists they work on commission and it'd be nice to have that database you know worked on so that so if somebody wanted to have like maybe Terry make something for, if you'd make something for me you know and they could go to that database or this person does this and then they can maybe go and get something made for somebody or or just a go-to all around go to thing, but also I thought maybe highlight each artist with a virtual, some kind of a virtual, this is what I do, this is what I make, and uh, what the history, why, did, why did I got into it or she got into it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it connects to what you said, John, because like if <clears throat> once a month or once a quarter, if we um, invited one of the artists on that registry to just do a virtual sharing of their work and just put it out there to like on the website for the yeah. city saying okay this this art commission event is actually an online event and we're going to be hearing from john frick about his work in the art directing profession and how that Work, you know, know what that looks like. We could get me. Or Karen comes on with her her uh, jewelry. Her jewelry. Or and Keaton's stuff. wife in her watercolor. Yeah. Or Kat in her sculptures. I, I, I don't know what Terry does, but Terry could get on there too. And, and and Terry's an incredible <laughs> I don't know what he makes or anything. Well, but this Terry thing you're know. talking about sounds more like a portfolio type of thing where somebody could see someone's right. work. People this could is, ask questions this, of the artist. That's what I would they, like. They could send in a hey, so what, what? What were you thinking when you made that tomato green instead of red or whatever? I don't you know. know. Like, <laughs> why are there eyes all over that banana or something? I <laughs> yeah, I think that John, these are two separate things that we're talking about. One of them is a specific presentation that would be maybe yours, and then I understand what Ruth and Joe are suggesting that. It would be great to use or to create a registry and have it and then feature the artists. And actually, Karen and I were talking earlier today about um, the idea of maybe having a, a Zoom session with five artists on it. And during that Zoom session, you know, each artist gets to talk a little bit about what they do and how they approach their task and maybe could even give a mini lesson of some sort during one of those so these are you know different ideas for how to bring art into the public eye yeah in regard to the project i was working on the, the barrier is the database uh the, the more features 
that you want mm -hmm. to have. And really, it needs to be able to do searches. For sure, this database, somebody should be able to go in and search for a certain kind of art or a certain, for, for different uh, search uh, for names, et cetera. And uh, it requires an investment of money that it, I didn't want to make yet. So I'm, yeah. still, I'm trying to find the best database for the cost. Now, mm -hmm. in the interim, the, there is a, uh, a neighborhood newsletter called The Village Voice. And The Village Voice features artists every month, every issue. There's an artist and they're, they usually make an artist statement and they, uh, they'll have three of their works presented and contact information, whether they do commissions and contact information, how to get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. And I would invite everybody on this commission and any artist you know to contact me in my role in Village Voice Valley so I can Voice. get you in the queue uh, so, so, people, so your art can get out in the community so people can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's separate from an official commission business. But this is a way, because this is up right now, and we have an artist for November. We're going to do five or more in December because of Christmas to give people an opportunity to promote themselves. So huh. if, you're in, if you're interested in that, let me know. Any of you, just email me. Okay. And just point of information, it's Valley Voice so that y'all can find it if you Google it. Yeah, it's Sunset Valley Village Voice. No, the Sunset Village Valley Voice. Valley Voice. Valley Voice? Oh, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, I know. My That's the reason I remember is because Valley Twice. Okay. Well, are you a subscriber? Yeah, we're. I'm a subscriber. Girl. Cool. I you think I am. You're a subscriber to. Uh, to sub, to sub, ask to be features as a Sunset Valley artist. But that will enable you to look at it and see if you want your work in that publication to see the quality of it. That's that sort of thing. Right. Oh, that's great. Carrie, I was also going to say, I don't know uh, what Rob's current status is, but I wonder if he doesn't know about databases that are not too expensive or possibly free that would enable you to do stuff. But that may be a side conversation. Yeah, I like that. Cool. I saw him shake his head, so I'll be contacting you, man, on, on that. All right. Yeah. Yay. Yes, Ruth. So the, um, the Valley Voice does a really good job and it puts in an artist and links and stuff like that. But I, I think if in the future, if we can dovetail with them and let them know that, you know, we're going to feature, you know, this artist as a virtual like symposium uh, open to everyone who wants to get online and join that virtual thing why don't you feature an article about this artist and put a link to our symposium in the Valley Voice, that kind of thing, so that they don't oh, that's, that's very doable, that that uh, supporting, uh, because we're all going for the same thing, which is is to to enhance the arts in our community and to give our mm -hmm. art, art is not an easy road for people who mm -hmm. requires a lot of attention and time. And so it's to give them an opportunity give, to help those small businesses, the artists, get get out there. Yeah. So what would we call these virtual um, encounters with an artist and their work and live and you can chat in your questions and there'll be links in the chat for seeing more of their portfolio online or anything like that. We would need a really nice name for this kind of a recurring event that features an artist live virtually for people to visit with and learn from. It'd be really cool too, because we've got some children that are artists too. Children that are artists too. And that would be neat to feature them. And it would be neat for children who are interested in the arts to talk to the live artists and chat in their questions. And Symposium sounds so stuffy. Okay, yeah, but I think that there, there, if we look at the amount of museums that are giving virtual, at least 
these days and stuff like that. There is something stuff like that is not very eloquent, excuse me. Things of that genre that when you look at the work that they do, there are lots of good titles out there for things you could call it. So if you look at Artnet, for example, it will say, oh, such and such a curator is doing XYZ thing, and there's lots of good potential names for that kind of an event. Luckily, we have until 2021 to make more decisions about that. But I think one of the questions, yes, Karen, after oh, you. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to um, mention is, you know, to keep our connection with the vendors that we have 70 vendors from ArtFest that, um, you know, we had to cancel ArtFest, but that's a whole list of a database that we have of um, vendors and art vendors who we could keep alive maybe through by including some of those in in this kind of a, a a thing so that we keep contact with them and then when we're when art fest comes back we still have that connection yeah that's a great idea, idea. so the first part would probably be to start with the local registry of mm -hmm. citizens of sunset valley that are artists and then after that, to see about how to extend out further than that. Yes. Uh, other commentaries, questions, suggestions? Uh, yes. May I say something about ideas to revisit? Yes. Um, a few times in the past, and maybe as recent as the last Arts Commission meeting, there was discussion and seemed to be interest in uh, not letting the Facebook page for ArtFest just die. Uh, it would be pretty simple to um, periodically mention something about art and of course tie into what you're discussing now. Um, it's there, there's 1,293 followers. Um, it's, it's, it's a shame to, to let this resource go. I already wrote one and submitted one uh, initial post that would be very easy to do and I gave ideas for two or three others. Um, it doesn't take a lot of work and I just think it's it's a good idea. Uh, even if ArtFest never comes back in its uh, 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 traditional form, um, it ties into Sunset Valley, Arts, and ArtFest may come back in some other forms with the very same name if uh, there are some um, uh, events that are closer to the, sh uh, the stores or other things that uh, are being discussed uh, or might be discussed by the marketing firm. Uh, you know, let's keep it, let's keep it a, a little bit alive and, and not just the art vendors, but the people who would come to uh, our events, the people who are on there, friends of friends. I mean, when we were, we didn't have time, but the idea was a few months ago, so for everyone to recruit everyone they knew to sign up for it and then it may have a, a build in effect for it but it's 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 at 1293 now 12 1293 people any thoughts on that would it be uh, possible to simultaneously live stream a virtual presentation of an artist and their um portfolio and what have you on Facebook, as well as some other platform that's more accessible if people aren't Facebook members, so that we could use the Facebook ArtFest site as a channel to, to engender interest and to uh, and, and as a streaming vehicle, but also have it more available to people outside Facebook. I don't know about technologies in that way. I mean, I think. Well, if I could jump in, um, that's all interesting, but it's sort of a little bit a tangent of what I was saying. I was saying, why don't we just simply put a post up there and do one another month from now? Um, it could, and the events that you're talking about are going to take months to come to fruition. Um, and gosh, the next thing you know, it'll be a whole year since anyone's heard anything from that Facebook uh, page at all. Um, does anyone, is there any interest here in keeping that page alive for the simplest of posts? Or am I overstating its importance? Which is, uh, I'd be happy to entertain that idea. I like really? the idea, but I'm just afraid it's going to fall on me since I jumped at it last time. And I'm really pressing to 
get a book ready for publication by the end of December. So I have no bandwidth whatsoever until 2021 to even consider thinking about ArtFest Facebook. So uh, I like this, the idea, uh, I'm not against it. I'm just not gonna put my hand up there to help out because I'm real busy. Okay, you're the admin, Ruth. Uh, I already wrote a full post. It's very simple. It just says we are, uh, we're sorry that we weren't able to be with you last April. We hope everyone is doing well and they're safe and including art in their lives. I mean, something like that. Um, um, just to put it there, did that take too much time to do? Or do you want to relinquish your admin um, post and have someone else do it? I would like to not touch Facebook because I'm actually, for lack of a better word, I'm on a Facebook fast. I am totally avoiding social media. I'm focused on getting my book written. So I don't even want to have to think about having to open it or look at it. In fact, I'm making friends mad because they're like, why didn't you see my post? I'm like, because I'm not opening it. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> so yeah, I am totally not going to be doing anything on Facebook for at least. Okay, so then if you're not going to be doing anything on Facebook for ArtFest, until the you go right ahead. then if someone else needs to someone else needs uh, have the password and know how to uplink it. Uh, sounds like something simple that Matt could do, particularly if it's already a pre-written post. And he, uh, uh, what do you think, Matt? I'm fine with doing it. I just had, it just needs to be. I, I feel like consensus by the commission that that's, you know, if, if they want to say, hey, Miles, you know send 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 me your post and i'll you know do it periodically as long as the, i feel like the commission agrees you know it's avenue of the city i can yeah sure i can but in fact i think i might even have admin rights or do i not i don't know i, I i'll check on that but i think i have like way back when uh when michelle and i were talking i'm sure it's as simple as well posting in a facebook page and, and also the idea of getting the whole commission to weigh in on it there is precedent for us posting on the ArtFest page without having 15 people around the table throwing in their two cents. It happened in, in uh, March of this year when Ruth was able to put several posts up uh, about the musical acts and, and I think one of the, uh, the food vendors. Um, it's already been done, um, and, and, and unless that was an error, Sasha, it seemed to me like it was okay to not have uh, the whole commission, um, you know, throw in there two cents and something and weigh it down stop it from happening what do you think sasha i just just i'm just going to interject as staff i just i don't want to be posting on a city facebook page without like permission from the whole commission miles it's it's not it's not that i don't want to do it it's just i want to make sure i think when ruth was making those posts the commission had decided ruth was going to ha you know be handling that so that's why i didn't want to just jump in sure. and do it okay so there's i hear two questions one of them is do we want to continue our presence on the facebook page just to keep the concept alive um and then the other one is uh, i heard you asking me directly miles you know do we need to have the whole table decide about each posting and i would say to the first answer to the first question which i already forgot I think we need to make a decision collectively about that one that we do want to do that Facebook presence. And then aside from that, I think if one other person plus the author looks at things, we're fine to post. Um, of course, I'd always like to see them just because I'm nosy. Um, but I yeah, think that. I submitted mine to one or two other people in an email as a group. Uh, like two, one or two other people, and I just sent like a group of posts that's so like, okay, you guys like these four posts? If no other comments, I'll queue them up. So, yeah. Right. right. So, I guess if, I yes, if, admin, so I'd be happy to give anybody access. That only takes me, you know, 10 minutes, and then I'll let them have it. <laughs> okay. Terry. Yeah, I would like to, uh, to, talk to this uh, and I agree with Ruth that that she anticipated what I was going to say is to have a group of three basically they're like the your editors our editors for our Facebook and those three have to agree to post something uh, if there's a big concern that uh, 
three people would go rogue at the same time. Uh, you could also include the chair in that uh, email list so that uh, the chair if doesn't intercede, then the chair is taking responsibility to the city for it. And that takes care of that. It's really hard to get uh, all the full committee to to participate, given how important it is to do the, the, the posting regularly and timely. Right. You, we could set up an editorial board for the postings of the people who really want to do the work and uh, include the chair in the communication loop. Yeah. I think it needs to be the, a, a very streamlined um, editorial board, as you say. And uh, I do think that that sounds like a good way to approach it. So what do you all think? I guess the first thing we want to make sure is let's get it OK from the committee or not OK about um, do you want to continue with Facebook posts as a way of keeping things alive? And I guess do I need to um, make a motion about that? Yeah, I would like to make a motion to continue with Facebook because social media is just really important. And that, that's where uh, several generations live now. So I think it would be unwise not to be on that field. So I'll make a motion we continue. Okay. And Matt, you can make up the sentence about what it says in a second. And in the meantime, I'll see if we have a second. Do you have a second for that? Okay, Rob. Thank oh, you. I'll second that. Yep. Good. All right. So um, here you go, Matt. Another responsibility. Can you read what that motion would say? <laughs> so Terry made a motion to continue with uh, the. Okay, to continue with the Arts Commission presence on the Arts Fest Facebook page. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, which includes, shall we vote and Go ahead. Sorry, which includes regular posting. Just, we don't, let's not put a time. Let's just say with regular posting, right? Re or regular. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a vote then. All in favor of that motion. And we've got, I see Miles, I see John, I see Terry, I see Rob, I see Joe and Ruth. So that looks like the motion passes. <clears throat> now the second question is just about the structure in terms of um, how we would organize this. And I would say that um, I just don't know how it's working for people to be doing subcommittees because it doesn't seem like they're, um, well, I guess, do we have some people who would like to be on a subcommittee or uh, an editorial board, as you put it, Terry? That's for, whatever you call it. That's, that was just something. I'm sorry. Oh, it's whatever you call it. it yeah, uh, I just use that that term to to show that the uh, the professionalism of it that these throw three folks are talking to each other and and agreeing right. appropriate represents a good image for the city and for the art commission. Yeah. Okay. Editorial oh, board. Group. Yeah. We're a working group for, a group for the purpose of working on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. A Facebook working group, editorial board, whichever. I'm jiggy with that. And who would be who would be interested in being on that? Ruth, I'm assuming that January 1st, 2021, you're back full power with us. <laughs> uh, Joe retires December, and I need to throw a retirement party. And I need to recuperate from throwing a retirement party. So I can't tell you full force January 1, but it will be January sometime. Yay. OK, that's great. Some level. Yes. But I've really well, committed to finishing this book. So yeah, I, these aren't like I, I know like subcommittee has kind of failed, but th this seems like it's a little bit more like something gets written up. It gets emailed like thumbs up goes. 
I, I don't think we need to have a meeting. It's like as soon as whoever is writing it writes it, they could just send it out. Yeah, I agree with Rob because that's that's the way it works out in the the, the real world. Is everyone's in touch virtually and they're constantly communicating, and people aren't meeting uh, even uh, on Zoom. They're they're they're, they're doing this through text, so they're sending each other documents, that sort of thing, so they can move fast. Yeah, I would I would also want piggybacking off what Karen said about the 70 vendors that we have. Yeah, uh, it would be nice to the December is the is the most intense commercial time of the year. It actually starts now between now and the end of December. Uh, maybe there's a posting sometime in December by this new group that's being formed up that basically uh, is, is shouting out, is mentioning these 70 vendors to people. Yeah. I'm presuming that our Facebook site is more than just the vendors, that it's all, it's uh, many people who have attended Art Fest. So it'd be a way to give them some uh, boost during December. And also, yeah. That would engender loyalty back toward the art commission and art fest. Yeah. yeah, most of these artists have bios ready to go, and like, there's plenty of content. It almost just writes itself at that point. Where like, you know, heck, we can have one like once a week and just like spotlight a new artist, and it keeps it alive a little bit more, and it definitely fulfills like the purpose. So, just make sure that they're cool with it. I'm sure they would be fine with it. Yeah, that's one thing I was going to ask is I don't know if there are any permissions that are required of the vendors that we have to ask them, are they willing to have us be broadcasting their information or not? Yeah, so get their permission and then we'd probably also want to do something just so that we're not showing favorites so that we're not like, you know, we're, we're not picking, like we're not putting like Supriya forward. I don't know if she normally has a booth at, I think she does. She but, does. Uh, yeah, but is it, you know, we don't want to show favoritism either. You know, they would just be almost like put them in a hat and pull them out or something to see who who gets posted. Do do you want me uh, like some staff direction because I've got all of the, you know, vendor application forms from the current one and then years past. Do you want me to like draft an email and send it out to all those vendors and say, hey, here we're thinking about featuring, uh, you know, some of our uh, Art Fest vendors on our Facebook page. Would you be interested? Do you, is that something you'd like me to do? Because I have access to all of those emails from vendors. So that'd be, that'd be awesome. Do you guys want to? I like Terry's language of editorial group and and well the editorial part and then Ruth's language about a working group. A working group. Do you want to limit it to Facebook? So, you know, rather than calling it a Facebook group, because you, know, you might want to do something on Instagram. Yeah. Social media working group or social media editorial. I would add digital and social media just to get wider yes. abilities. Yeah. Miles, we'll get you uh, signed up for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am curious. Okay, so um, I've seen some obvious people interested in this idea. One is Terry and one is Miles, right? I just plugged in over at my desk. Can you bring a chair in? Did I understand that right? That you two are both interested in that? Hello? Anybody else? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it would probably, given that I have this other uh, obligation right. to do these sort of things, I would, I could be like a, I would lend whatever support I could and, you know, okay, I'm willing to do it. Cause I honestly think given if Miles on it and there needs to be somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to, if it's just like reading an email and just being like, oh, this okay. works, then I could help as well. If we, if we're just trying to fill out three, yeah. And when Ruth frees up, yeah. Ruth 
you Ruth could take my place if you want to be on this after your book, you finish your book. Yeah. And the retirement party. <laughs> yeah. And maybe Miles, Terry, and Rob with uh, uh, the chair, Sasha, uh, CC on everything. Yeah. Is that so is this a motion or is this a suggestion? I think it sounds sort of like a motion. Right? I think you put it in a motion so that it's um, official and it's an action of the committee and you have it recorded, don't you think, Matt? Yes, I agree. Yeah. Give the and yeah. Okay, so. May I clarify one thing, like, Madam Chair, before you make the motion, I, in regard to people who volunteered, I really want to tie myself to Ruth. So when Ruth is available, she she's the <laughs> third person. Do you agree to that, Ruth? I will jump in sometime in January because I also have a son graduating college in December. So I gotta take care of right. that little. So well, I'll I'll take care of it until so. until you're freed up. That's yeah. So. so it'll be January at some point. Okay. And I'd be glad right, to jump great. in with all my experience and all that and do all the, I mean, I love all your ideas. I just, I'm trying to strangle myself to not jump in and do anything because I got it. Okay. Thank so, you. Thanks for that uh, clarification. So it's, it's, we're looking at a digital media working group for the Arts Commission. Yes. Mm -hmm. With the purpose of promoting Art Fest vendors and Sunset Valley artists. Yes, I, I would reverse the order Sunset Valley right. artists and Sunset Art Valley Fest. artists and Art Fest vendors. So you getting this, Matt? I'm helping you write your motion. <laughs> <laughs> and I would add and the city of Sunset Valley. group will consist of Miles and Rob and Terry. And who should I give the admin access to the Facebook group? Or Matt, Matt, are you an admin or just an uh, a publisher on it, an editor on it? I don't know. Have to, I think I, you're admin. I, I'm an admin. I think I'm an admin. Uh, I'll, I'll Miles, check out which one of you guys wants to be the one actually queuing up and and um, posting this stuff? Because you can post a whole lot of it and set a timer so it goes off when you say. So you really, you know, you can sit there just like once a month and queue up 30 things. I deleted my Facebook account in 2008, so. I don't even know how to use it anymore. <laughs> okay. So I mean, by, default, I'll, by default, I'll become the admin. Yeah, okay. I think that makes sense. Okay. All right. So within the next 48 hours, I will get you on Facebook on the Sunset Valley Art Fest page. Right. As far as I understand it, it will be the same as uh, it, it doesn't have to have wide. We don't have to wait to the next. Uh, um, Arts Commission meeting to post something, right? No. No, no just it even, would need to be with CC and Sasha. That's what yeah, I did before. I forget who the three were, but it was me and two other people, and then Sasha was CC. And I'd create like three or four of them in it and attach them to an email as screen captures, and I would send them off to you guys. They were queued up with no debt, set, set time or date. I just screen captured them in Facebook, sent them to you guys, and you gave me the thumbs up. And so then I made them live for a a certain time and day. I did it just twice. I did four at a time. So I think I had like two a week or something for a month. Something small like that. Daily would be awesome, but we'll get to that. Yeah, that's too much, I think. So yes, that's the answer to the question, Miles. Great. Um, so as far as the motion, Ruth, was that so? I'm I've been taking notes. Ruth, was that you making the motion then? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. so you made a motion to create a digital media working group for the Arts Commission to promote Sunset Valley artists and art fest vendors. And then Miles added, uh, if you'll take this amendment, and then Miles, maybe you'll second it in the chat down here. Um, so to promote Sunset Valley artists, art fest vendors, and to keep art fresh and ongoing in our lives despite the changes in our lives. So. And that working, and part of the motion is that working group will consist of Miles and Rob and Terry. Group will consist of, and and everything will also be CC'd to the chair. Right. 
and it'll operate outside the commission so that they can move just those three with Sasha being on it. Gotcha. Sounds good to me. All right. So we now need to have a second to that motion. Do we have a second? Okay, nice Joe, idea. thank you. Let Miles do it because he's my husband. <laughs> That's right. Okay, okay, we'll accept your second. Miles, you okay with being the second? I'd like to second it. All right. Okay. Well, then we can go ahead and vote and just raise hands for visual purposes. I, all in favor, say aye. Okay. It looks like that's everybody. And we have an extra little hand. Hi, little hand. <laughs> okay. So that's, um, that's six, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. I would love to see us be able to, I mean, Seven. Apart from what we've just passed, I would love to see us be able to maybe by January have a monthly or every other month virtual uh, art talk. So that because I was just talking to a family in Sunset Valley that has their kids at home schooling, you know, now online and everything, and they're just scraping for things to do art wise. I mean, yeah, they have online math tutorials and online history tutorials, and they even have this little something or other they can do a science but they're really struggling with something that the kids can engage themselves in art wise and it would be so cool if we can at least encourage our sunset valley kids to get online and learn about art from our sunset valley art commission you know event kind of thing online that would be so cool yeah do we have any questions for an actual cheetah here yeah no. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> We're glad to see a young lady in our presence. All right. So we are settled on this one. We voted for that one, right? And can I and just, can I ask one thing of the, and this is mostly for the working group, but uh, you all were okay with me, you know, getting those emails from all the Art Fest vendors to kind of just, and just send out a mass email saying, hey, would you be, you know, do you want us to promote you on our Facebook page? Do we have your permission? Do you have a website you'd like us to use? Is that something yeah, I meant to like? put it in my motion, Dane? But oh. thanks for <laughs> well, staff direction can doesn't have to be a motion, so I can just be yeah, direct. Definitely, that. definitely, because that would give Matt and Rob and Terry material. Because right. you can require they provide images and they require like fifty words or less. Right. You know, especially ask them if you're interested. You know, let us know and because you don't want them because what they'll do, I mean, I'm experienced in this. What they'll do is they'll send you way too much stuff and it'll take you an hour to distill it down to what you need and to go through the images and crop them and make them. So you need to tell them right up front. We want square images that go the best on Facebook. They have to be cropped square and they have to provide us with like 100 words or less or something like that. They'll just send you a pile of stuff and you're spending hours cleaning it and figuring out what's relevant. Just okay. So I'd like to suggest something to everybody. I think that'd be a great idea, but I don't see a need to try to do that before Christmas. Um, it seems to me that we ought to speak with our local artists now. And then as we get, I mean, maybe those vendors would sell to us at Christmas or whatever, but I feel like you guys have a lot on your plate and the holidays are coming. So I would suggest that we wait till the uh, 20, well, till January to do that part of this work. I'm wondering if others have thoughts about that. I, I think it's kind of nice to get those artists made out there um, in the run up to Christmas because like they lost, you know, they lost the the business from art fest so maybe we get it in front of like a thousand people and maybe they sell five extra paintings or pieces of jewelry or whatever so mm -hmm. it also gives us something else to talk about to be relevant mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and and i don't know that you need i think yeah i agree to get it out there as soon as possible and um maybe you just get the approval of who's still in business what vendors are still in business 
Um, do they have, you know, stock to promote? Um, and do they want to be promoted? And then um, perhaps then someone can just that random selection, you know, pick pick a group and then be more specific about what they should submit. Mm -hmm. So Matt doesn't get inundated with a million uh, square images and emails from everybody. Right. That's what I'm concerned about is what it is that we're throwing on your shoulders, Matt. And so I want to try to make sure that we keep the parameters realistic. So maybe we pick five of what we consider to be our best vendor artists, you know, people that really do art and or sculpture or whatever it is and start with them or something to that effect. I don't think we need to vote on that. I just think we need to keep in mind that we give you the flexibility to fit everything in because there's lots coming up still. Thoughts? Thoughts? Yes, Ruth. Ruth? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Yeah. To save Matt from iterations of send out a blanket email to 70 people and various ones come back, then he has to reply and give them the parameters and then they reply and something like this. That's why I'm saying when he sends out and says, if you're interested in having us feature you on our Sunset Valley Art Fest Facebook or digital media, reply with and maybe have a form or have a just at least points, these points. And then he'll just forward that on to Miles, and then Miles will get them answering those points, and then he can work with it. Because in this industry, you spend a lot of time with sending an email, then getting one question back, and answering that one question, then finally getting your form back. And then, I mean, Matt's going to be, I mean, if half of these people reply, he's going to really be busy. If he could just say specifically, it's this. This is your opportunity. These are how to respond. These three steps. And then he gets a reply for it. And that's all he has to that sounds good. Matt, what do you think? They're in, if they need exposure and they need money at Christmas, they'll reply, otherwise we'll ignore it. Right. Okay. Um, can I just, well, I guess I'll put this draft email together and then send it out just to the the group and then just get your thumbs up and he edits. And then I'll, and I'll send, I'm going on vacation this week, but I'll send it out. Um, to all the vendors, and I can even get someone here at, at City Hall to help uh, to just help me transcribe all the emails because they're not digital; they're on paper. But um, it, it won't take long. And then um, I'll just shoot that email off to you guys uh, to the working group to uh, look at and say, "Hey, this looks good." Make any edits, and then I'll send out the blast next week, and then we'll see who replies. Hey, hey Matt. Um yeah. I believe if you just um, reach out to uh, Michelle, she has the email contact list already oh, set up. That so is that is time. beautiful. Because <laughs> yeah, I've got I, I literally just have uh, the applications themselves. But yeah, if Michelle can yeah. provide that for me. That's even that's even better. So yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't someone suggest a, a moment ago that instead of doing the the blast uh, a wide blast, just pick the half dozen ones that we know have good stuff and then. Or have been a part of it, and that they're more likely to respond. And because the, the post itself can't be more than you know a handful of websites. Um, uh, if, 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 you, if, if Karen, you know these people, are they likely to respond if they get an email like that? If you picked the half a dozen best sellers or half a dozen most interesting vendors, um, I think you'll get a, probably a good response. Um, there's just a handful of more of the say, that um, we usually, you know, put in a certain section of the festival, um, but it's a small amount of the total. I think if you just get, if you got all of the responses, then that would give you enough fodder for the whole next year. You know, you could just. Right, right, uh, okay. So, so in which cases, too, it's got to be worded so, uh which one of you is, is not just which one of you are selling things up until this per during for Christmas. It has to be which ones are, are, are have an, an, an ongoing uh, digital sales platform. Yeah, an interest in being promoted uh, throughout the year on our um, Art Fest Facebook page. And, and uh, do anything either. I mean, they send it in, you know, we, we use it as we can. 
and or uh, or as we want to uh, over the next few months. Right. Yeah, I think it, you could say um, uh, features will be randomly selected from the response respondents, mm -hmm. something like that. And then um, I would just say mix it up. So when when we set up the booth space for Art Fest, um, we'll typically get too many jewelers, and then we start to get overwhelmed with potters. And so you have to have a balance. So I would say, you know, feature different. Uh, different uh, techniques each time, you know, like pick a oil artist and then pick a metal artist and then, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Good point, especially about excesses of jewelry and and also certain excesses with fabric work. Yeah, there was. Okay, sounds good. Other thoughts or commentaries, or I think it seems like we've done some good work on thinking about the future and about resolving this. Um, let's keep the arts alive through the digital media um, and social media. Right? Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other thoughts for our for 21 and 22 in terms of free and easy ideas? Or shall we table that discussion till next time? Because we've got a good list of them. And I think the question is, when do we get to get going on them? No. Maybe at the next meeting you can have that as an agenda item to set up a plan and a schedule for, um, you know, you want to do them monthly, you want to do them quarterly, you want to, you know, start really planning out how you want to do them. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. put a schedule together. And what Ruth said too of uh, finding a catchy name, you know. Mm -hmm heard several names like symposium or talk or something but yeah if it could be some kind of alliteration or so i don't know something catchy that could maybe that's easier to promote that way so be thinking of names i guess yeah mm -hmm. uh, rob you had your hand up uh, yeah i um i don't know if this fits in here but when we first terry i think we're getting feedback from you Right, I'll, I'll. If you can mute. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, so, the when and I guess this is specifically for maybe Karen because I think Karen, you were one of the founding members of the Arts Commission, right? John was too. Oh, yeah. John was. Sorry. So when you guys first did Art Fest, uh, what was the lead up time? I, I feel like if we're gonna do Art Fest in 2022, then we want to make sure that we don't miss the boat to start planning for that. Like, I don't think we need to start doing it now, but we should think about thinking about it. And so, especially if it's so in disarray and who knows, like, I just, I just want to know like when we should start to think about like what the plan is, what our budget is going to be for that, et cetera, et cetera. Cause you know, if it, we, we canceled 2021 because we're like, we're already behind the eight ball trying to plan it. Right. So we're just like, we're probably not going to be able to have it and we should have been planning already. So for 2022 yeah. and like asking for money and stuff like that, when do you think we should have that on our radar? That's a really good question, Rob. And um, remember before we realized that COVID was going to squash our 21 event also, um, and we pulled that, we were um, faced with having to put out the new RFP. So that's going to be a requirement for moving forward. And I would suggest that that work start in as soon as the new commission is seated, that um, you start looking at what would you want in the RFP. I sent you and Sasha a packet of the original one from 2010, I think it was. Um, yep. So if you guys, that's a place to start. Um, but what would you want included 
for that RFP that you put out? What do you want someone to do, a producer to do for the event? And then, and then that is going to take some time because once you get clear, then it's got to be put in the format with Matt and the city to go to council. And then it has to be put out for bid. That's a, that's a pretty significant month, <laughs> quite a few month process. And if you want to get ready, you want to be ready to plan with whoever's going to be the production manager, you want to be able to get hit the ground running and have a new budget ready um, at the opening of the fiscal year for 21-22, because <clears throat> we really start working on that in October for the April event. So the budget, at, usually budgets were due in July. There's been some talk about pushing that up and doing the budgeting earlier. So that's gonna be a consideration. I would say you should really be pretty clear about finances in May, um, at least have a draft idea of where you want to go. And then you're gonna to have to be watching the income from the sales tax revenue and the hotel fund. Because right now there's not income there and they're, they're in arrears. So that's gonna be a critical component in how you move forward. Sure. So it's going to be your year start in January and try to have everything ready to go by May, I would say. Don't you think, Matt? Yes, the, the RFP uh, yeah, process can be lengthy, but if we start thinking about it in you know January, then we could possibly have one ready to go you know if hey it looks like we can do one but like you said another uh something else to watch is the especially for art fest is the hotel income the hotel tax income yeah. so if we don't really see that uh, increase I, you know we might again have to explore what you know what art fest would look like so mm -hmm. yeah okay Thank you. Good question, Rob. Good question. And I think something all of us really need to keep in mind is that it takes a long time if you're planning a big event. Um, you know, I would say a year, basically. And if it's not a big event, then it still takes time. You know, so we'll have to think about that more. January. Yeah. And add to that the, the long process of going out for an RFP uh, with, the, with the city government and having it go through council. So I would say you'd want to have that before council mm, by the end, of, well, I'd say February or March. By by March for sure. By March yeah. for free. It's, you know, we always say, oh, get your art, you know, get, yeah, it, <laughs> it always takes longer than, it, than it's actually yeah. posted. So the end of the first quarter, you should be before council with that. Fun, 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 fun in the sun. <laughs> okay. All right. So we probably actually need at some point to have a, a date keeper of sorts that just is saying, okay, let's not forget this one thing that needs to be done by this time. I suppose that's supposed to be me. But if anybody suddenly goes, oh, I'm a date freak. I'm dying to do that. Let me know. Okay. So in the meantime, I think we have covered what we needed to cover for today. Um, but let me just open up the floor and see if I'm right or wrong about that. Is there anything pending that we have not addressed within our agenda? Well, or that is within our agenda that hasn't been discussed or clear, clarified. That looks like silence is golden again. Yeah, okay. So um, what I do have a commitment to doing, and Matt, I know you'll help me remember to do this, is to send out the notes, or at least a to-do, way sooner than a month from now. You know, like within the next week. So that something Karen used to do years ago that was really helpful was after every meeting, she would just send out a, a local to-do list. And it worked really well because it reminded everybody of what it was that they were supposed to be doing. And so I think that might be a good thing for us to um, implement, even though it's all in the agenda and it's all in the notes. 
uh, just a personal note saying this is what we decided to do is also helpful. Okay. Any comments, questions, complaints, jokes? I have something uh, to bring up. Um, um, in terms of Rob Johnson's participation, if he should win a seat on the city council, um, would that mean that he he couldn't participate the way he has been doing now? Correct. Okay. Correct. When you're done with the meeting. Good luck, Rob. <laughs> Thanks. That was kind of a bummer. I thought I thought I could maybe still just be like a normal member. I guess not. <laughs> no, once you're on council, you're a council member. You could be the liaison. Yeah, you could you could be the liaison, but I wouldn't want to mess up this good thing we got with Karen. So. <laughs> yeah, but that is a good question and one that we will yet see about. But that doesn't well, preclude Terry and Rob from getting together about finding that uh, low cost database. Anyway. <laughs> What were what's you going to say? What's the worst committee? <laughs> the worst committee? Yeah, what do you think? Oh, I have all kinds of thoughts about that, but. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> the most boring. The, the most boring or the least boring? Uh, the most boring. I, I wonder if that's where, where I'll end up. I mean, like, uh, yeah, you'll have to discuss that with your new council members okay. if you get on to council. <laughs> Well, I and now that the meetings are virtual, you can actually attend all of them virtually and kind of see for yourself which ones are more interesting than others and how they're operating. But that's all going to change, too. So there'll be new yeah. people sitting on them, new chairs, all of that. So to yeah. be determined. Yeah, I'll send you a couple of private opinions about that, but I don't think I'll publicly comment on that subject because it would be very biased anyway. All right. Well, um, it seems that we, Miles, did that that answered your question, right? And uh, so we're good to close our meeting. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have, let's see, a motion to adjourn. Anybody second? Okay, Terry and Joe. All right, Joe. I hope you feel better. And um, then I would say, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate your hard work and your perseverance in the face of what has been a kind of really frustrating year. So let's hope for a better year next year. Okay. Thanks a lot. Good night, young ladies.